Welcome to the Wickshire Project. I'm in a good mood. You guys know I'm not, right? <laughs> this is one of those videos. I'm having a day. Today on the Shire, the sun is kind of iffy. You can see there's a lot of shading in here. Um, out of 4,800 watts, we're pulling in around 1,000, 1,200. It's enough to run the AC, but it's not enough to charge the battery. We do have to move those solar panels out there. We're not making full production. I'm a northerner, right? So I'm used to the sun being directly above and slightly back in the winter. So in the south, the sun is slightly back in the winter, and it's way north. So we're going to pull those panels out. Uh, that way it lessens the shading that's going to be on top of them. Speaking of off-grid life, if anyone decides to live this lifestyle, it is labor intensive. Eventually, when everything's set up, everything's mowed down, grass seeded, fences are up, electricity, water, dry composting area or septic put in, rainwater drain lines that go onto the property, uh, pond after it's been filtered into a holding pool that drains down and filters out, and then you have all your aquatic plants planted in there and drinking up all that goodness that comes from said greasy traps. The benefit of doing this is if the world crashes, you won't notice. You'll be busy living off grid. <laughs> and your neighbors will be like, oh, there's no food. Oh, we grow food. Oh, there's no electricity. Yeah. What do you think that is? Water's not safe to drink. We got rainwater and it's filtered. I know a lot of you are thinking about it. The Wickshire Project is basically was a, a dream and an idea. Oh, you'll notice down below, look, there's a channel name. Check that out. Not only are we the Wickshire Project, as you guys know us, it's the Wickshire Project off-grid. I had upgraded, forgot, you know? I was like, we're actually here, we're actually doing it. It's not just talking about it and, and you know, having that fantastic idea. Now, something you should know about me is I make a lot of promises to people and I don't hold up that end of the bargain. That's my mental, it's like a lottery if I do anything for anybody. Project uh, I am working on is my 500 subscriber giveaway that was done last year. I gave myself a year in the description on that video because I knew that this could happen, that we would get thrown out here unexpectedly and uh, survive, have to survive. And the wood project that I got is something I'm looking forward to and I'm gonna make a video about it. And we're doing a little trout on three pieces of wood and they're all chained together and hanging up. Another subscriber wants me to phone call. That's kind of hard for me to do. You know, very few people have our number. It's not that I don't want you to have our number or contact us. It's just that I am a crazy procrastinator. And my brain, even when I go to press the buttons, it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's hard for me. It really is. Everything with me takes time. When you're thinking about coming off grid and getting everything done, you really need to set up now. Start buying and researching solar and getting the best deals and putting together um, a small kit. What works for a cabin or a tiny home off grid? How many watts do you need? Minimal. I'll be honest with you, your solar charge controller needs to be an 80 amp at 150 VOC. That's open voltage. What that means is when you start connecting these panels together into one panel, if that panel's, uh, I don't know, if that panel's 48 volts and you connect them together, 48 times two, the voltage goes up, it's just under 100. You put a third one on there, it's 140. It gets close, you know? So that's why you have to buy a solar charge controller that's 80 amps and a high VOC on it. 
You can go the cheap route if you do. It's a learning maneuver. I did it, and I still have that equipment. Some of my first equipment that's over there charging up a little 12 volt battery that runs our outdoor shower. Pip, you gotta learn the rules here. Shh. <laughs> my wife's like, oh, do the goat voice. <laughs> you learn, right? Learn how to make chicken noises, learn how to make goat noises. Backyard's overgrowing. I'm gonna give the animal some water. I gotta pick up a sharp tool and start swinging it. I'm in flip flops as usual. I gotta get to work, I gotta cut some of this stuff down. That's why we got the goat and we should have goats in the future. Stuff is growing up on my solar panels and blocking, and I don't need any extra shading. <laughs> Wasn't much of a change. Shout out to Castle Hives. They're doing a promotion, giving away a beehive. So on the note of having bees, <laughs> I comment to Brian on his channel. Yeah, I just told my wife, uh, and she gave me the okay to enter the contest. And she was fine with uh, 25,000 stinging buttholes in the backyard. I'm going to take care of his chickens. thought he had a dog. Huh. Hopefully the dog's friendly. I'll have to go down with some padded armor. Another big shout out to Thorhaven. Aaron's out there whipping it, throwing axes and... He's just lightly, just gently tossing them into the wood at about, I don't know, 10 meters. And they're, and they're just sticking in there. And I was thinking, and it just hit, it struck me funny. Saxons had just slaughtered your entire family, and you're in like berserker rage mode. So you decide to take those axes and really give them a haul. I mean, that would split through oiled, hardened leather armor and <laughs> just, yeah, it would just take a neck off. Thanks for watching anyways. Uh, like, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one. If there's any bloopers, they're right here. If I lose a toe, it should make for good video content. My allergies are kicking. I gotta clear some of this brush. Why are you staring at? You ruined it. You, you, my concentration. Can I flip the camera around? But I gotta go. Clear. I can't do this if you bother. <laughs> this is one of those videos. I gotta check for eggs later. Love you too. Yeah, we should do a goat camp. I want to do... <laughs> Hip enough. We are off-grid here in Tennessee. This is the life. We're in a shed to house conversion. Tiny home, doing rainwater, hoople culture, garden bends. Next year, uh, we're going to take all the organic debris, all the stuff, big messes behind me. We pile it into there, let it break down organically because we're cheap. It's the whole point of the project, is to be cheap. Be frugal on a budget, use what you got around you. It could be the rocks, the stones, the dirts, the leaves, uh, the branches, the bird droppings, uh, animal manure, human manure at some point. Uh, again, if you visit the Shire, we won't be telling you what's in the salad. Uh, 25,000 stinging buttholes in the backyard. Will we be doing lives in the future? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I'll do lives again.